Yo, what's going on guys? Koi here. Today we're going to be talking about Zenless Zone Zero. Now, a lot of people, right, uh, they kept saying I was wrong about this one, but I'm telling you for sure, factions matter, and I'm going to show you how. So, uh, let's just go ahead and get down to the brass tacks. There are some characters that are more reliant on factions, and then there's some characters that just don't do anything if, like, they don't have the required faction. I'll give you an example. So, uh, pretty much uh, Bay right here, whenever she actually does have her active skill, which is the bonus skill, uh, when another, uh, you know, alliance, whenever another member of the faction or same attribute, attributes, by the way, when we're talking about attributes, we're talking about the little symbol, which is like, you know, uh, the, uh, how do you say it, the little hammer or the, the knives right here, as you can see. So it's like those are the attributes. I don't know if they mean by element because the only way I've seen attributes is like that. So, because obviously, whenever it comes down to doing the gears, this stuff is uh, attribute, uh, uh, kind of like W engines work off the attribute, which is this thing. So, that is how that works, I believe. So, uh, quote me if I'm wrong, but uh, let's go ahead and dip into this next part. So, whenever we do talk about some of these characters, do having more of a reliance than others, we'll discuss which ones. So, for instance... Uh, this one, she doesn't really require it. She does gain extra energy based off of having at least one faction member. So if that is the case, so, you know, if this is the case, then we're not going to have to worry too much about that if we replace one of the faction members. Unlike some characters like Homeboy over here, who actually does require two faction members to be on the same thing, or faction member and the same attribute. So, uh, I don't know if they mean attribute as in the element or as in the type the only way to do that is through testing which i just this this the tutorial is like six hours long if you ever played the game yet the tutorial is incredibly long so freaking you know i'm not even done with it yet i haven't unlocked challenges yet i haven't unlocked the multiplayer yet and i've been playing for a few hours so i had to take a day break too because the the, the tutorial takes forever they just keep adding stuff for you to do so that's that's just how that works so, um, there are some characters that only require one, um, and there's some that require two. So, for instance, uh, this one only requires one, and it gets that trigger. So, let's say you did this, right? You ran her, and then let's say you ran a character such as another ice unit to get really, really boosted, such as this dude. So, if you ran her, and then you triggered her effect while having the ice dude, he will actually work. But the problem is... She doesn't have that big of a faction right now. Uh, her faction is just herself right now. <laughs> so, uh, we'd have to go based off attribute. So, I guess you could possibly say that ice attribute would be the way to go. Um, so, yeah. So, running an ice team, she would be like one of the forerunners of that team uh, to get bonus damage. It's not that big of a like a buff compared to what you would think it would be. Uh, so freaking, you know, it really just depends on the way that you build your team. So, for instance, if I wanted to add this chick to my team, I would take this into into consideration. While on the uh, while another character on your squad shares the same attribute or faction, the guard bores inherent Lucy's attack crit rate and its crit damage. So she does get some ridiculous freaking bonuses here. She's, like, one of those characters that will require you to, like, run a faction member if you want her to perform at her best, which is very, very good. Uh, then there's some characters that you could just run alongside any character, uh, like this one. Whenever you, like, have, like, the, the faction bonus, increase the duration of shock inflicted. So, this is uh, when, sh uh, when enemies are on the field, all members' electric damage is increased by 10%. This is not a big one. This literally is more of a support one, so I would honestly just run her on almost any team because the amount of bonuses that she gives compared to other characters, not a lot. So it just depends. Like, there's some supports that are really, really good, some supports that don't really offer a lot, and it just is what it is. Uh, this chick, uh, additional ability, obviously we keep talking about the additional ability here. Uh, when Nicole's core passive mechanical case uh, applies the debuff to an enemy, all squad members deal 10, 25% more damage. Now, this is the weird one because I don't know if they mean um, uh, more 25% uh, more ether damage 
to the target. So I don't know if they mean that this is a brand new applied effect based off whatever characters that you bring on the table. Now, you would have to like actually run this as a like a test because I don't know if this means that whenever the passive does trigger, when it says all squad members, does it mean all squad members in general or all squad members only in the faction or same attribute? So, uh, freaking really, really hard to say about some of these characters. Uh, we have this chick right here. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 when another character on your squad shares the same attribute or faction, uh, deals more damage to stun to enemy. So this is like, you could do some really good team ups with some of these characters. Honestly. Uh, freaking, yeah. Not gonna lie. That's, uh, I think that the attribute actually does have to do with the, the, this. So honestly, if I were to like say that, then I would honestly say that the attribute would definitely be like some crazy teams might happen. Like her, her, there's an electric team. But this sucks though. Like these, honestly, building an electric team is so ma bad right now. Let's see if there's another character who could really make electric teams go off. Let's see. Uh, same attribute or faction upon hitting uh, enemies with the EX special attack. Next shock inflicted uh, on the target increases shock damage by 18%. This effect can stack up to two times, and each enemy uh, can trigger it once per skill use. Resets when shock effect ends. Now, I don't know if this means the stack itself also works based off of how many people you have on your faction or so, but, you know, hard to say yet for now. This dude, brand new guy. Uh, let's see if he's the guy. Oh, yes, look at this. So... When you have another faction member, obviously, while Anton is in burst mode, ev and every for every four critical hits, the next attack shocks enemies, triggering a shock damage bonus at 45% of the original damage. This effect can be triggered once every 0.5 seconds. That is amazing. That is amazing. And this you would run with, like, the perfect team. This is, like, how you make shock characters or just his entire faction really broken, as if you just had this dude... Just like front running your main damage dealer, he's like probably the best. Uh, he's probably the best um, electric character right now, and he's an A because uh, my brother said that this chick's absolutely mid. Grace is mid apparently. Uh, she's good, but if we're talking about bonus wise for adding these people onto these specific teams, you'd obviously be a aiming for a very specific uh, team based uh, setup. So, let's see, another one would be hard to say, because you're asking for stuns here, and there's not many characters that could do stuns. Maybe this chick. <laughs> let's see. If she offers any type of stun with her skill set, that'd be interesting. Uh, let's see. Physical damage. Rapid dodge. Slashing enemies. Physical damage, physical damage, physical damage, physical damage. Uh, let's see, spin release. Uh, oh yeah, some of these require engines. We'll talk about engines in another, in another video. Engines do matter quite a bit. Uh, let's see, rating the minimums. Followed by an upward steel and slash. Yeah, there's some really, really crazy setups and chain attacks you could really set up here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there, I don't think there's any stun that could really benefit this chick on this team. So she would have to run with the maid team and see who actually offers stun. Which would probably be one of these guys. Because that's shock, that's not stun. Yep. Uh, let's see. Freeze, ice character. Oh man, what is her ice attribute? Increases damage by 3% for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 10 times. 30% damage increase. That's not bad. That's actually very, very good. As long as you just have one character that shares the attribute. She's very good for just any like maid team or ice team. That's really good. I would actually pair her with probably him. Because this dude alone, just, uh, just very, very solid unit. 
hits a stunned enemy. The target's stun damage multiplier increases by 35%. That's really good. Uh, but for an ice team, he's just very, very good, hands down. He's literally just the Sanji of the game. We'll talk more about this stuff later. If you guys have any like questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below. I'll see you guys later. Uh, take it easy, and peace out.